Are you ready to shoot tethered? Are you looking for the best software to use? Tethering doesn't have to be difficult. In this video, I'm going to break down your options and look at why you might pick one over the other. And I'll even explain how I create backups of my files as they're downloaded to my computer during a shoot. Stay tuned. Hey gang, one of the first things that you need to consider before you shoot with your camera tethered to your computer, it's the software. Now if you're not sure what all this tethering stuff is and how to do it, go back and watch this video so that you're up to speed. Before we dig in, let me be clear about one thing. The ability to tether is an incredible asset if you're an advanced shooter and you've reached the point in your development as a photographer where you've learned the true value of having a workflow and a consistency to your process. In other words, this is not a technique for beginners. There is also a philosophy held by many people that shooting tethered is difficult and inconvenient. That couldn't be further from the truth. Yes, there's a learning curve, but we're living in an era where people expect images quickly, if not immediately. Shooting tethered has allowed me to deliver high quality images within hours of a shoot without sacrificing any quality or without compromising my workflow. Many of you are already using a piece of software that will allow you to shoot tethered. But before we look at the software, let's talk about some computer requirements. You're going to be downloading large raw files in real time to a computer while you shoot. It goes without saying that a faster processor is desirable. However, the most important spec, it's the RAM. This is where the real work happens and also where the bottleneck occurs if you don't have enough. For laptops, I would recommend at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and you'll want to use external hard drives since the laptops generally don't have lots of storage space available. Be sure that your external drives are 7200 RPM or faster. The higher the RPM, the faster your computer will be able to read and write the larger camera files. For desktop computers, you want the same minimum requirements, however it's even better if you have an internal storage drive that is 7200 RPM or faster, or better yet, a solid state drive. Solid state drives have no moving parts and are less likely to fail. Your backup hard drives don't need to be as fast as the primary storage drives because they won't impact your ability to download files from the camera and process them quickly. Now I know these two statements contradict each other, right? Not really. Let's start with the first statement. Depending on your needs, there is a long list of options. Adobe Lightroom, which many of you already have, Capture One Pro, Darkroom Core, Smart Shooter. If you're a Nikon photographer, there's Nikon Camera Control Pro. For Canon shooters, there's the Canon EOS Utility. Sony has the Sony Remote Camera Control. Heck, even Hasselblad has the Hasselblad Focus. And the list goes on. You can even find some open source software like Digicam Control if you're okay with the adventure that comes along with open source. For a complete list of options with links to their websites, be sure to follow the link in the description below to my blog post on tethering software. The challenge with all of these different software options is that some of them are camera specific. Some have very limited options and some contain specialized features like multiple camera control, time lapse, and HDR. That refers to the two most full featured software options which are compatible with the most cameras. And that would be Adobe's Lightroom and Capture One Pro. Most of you are familiar with Adobe Lightroom and are probably already using it or have used it in your evolution as a photographer. Lightroom is available for Windows and Mac and it will allow you to tether with select Canon, Nikon, and Leica cameras. For you Sony, Olympus, Fuji, and Pentax owners, there are workarounds or plugins that you can purchase to allow tethering with Lightroom. As an example, Sony users can use the free Sony Camera Remote Control software to download images from their camera to the computer and then set Lightroom to watch the import folder and auto import the files into Lightroom. This brings me to the first reason that I don't use Lightroom to tether. It is painfully slow. In my opinion, if you're shooting products or simple portraits, then Lightroom is more than adequate. But if you're a heavy shooter like I am and you want speed, Lightroom will be a very frustrating experience for you. That brings me to Capture One Pro. Also available for Windows and Mac, Capture One Pro has long been the industry standard for fast tethering 
and an incredibly powerful RAW converter. Capture One also has an app called Capture Pilot that will allow you to connect an iPhone or iPad to the software for remote viewing and even triggering of your camera. Capture Pilot has a web option that will allow Android users to view the images but not operate the camera. Now for the downsides on Capture One Pro. It comes with a hefty price tag and a sizable learning curve. Currently, a single user license is about $300 to purchase outright or $12.95 a month on a subscription basis. This is not a program that you install and find yourself using it like a pro in 10 minutes, even if you are a master at Photoshop. Phase One, the parent company of Capture One Pro, provides excellent learning tutorials on their website. So if you make that change, watch those tutorials. The reason for the learning curve is that this software is much more robust when it comes to color management than any other software currently on the market. Capture One's skin tone editing features are beyond compare. So if you're a photographer that really wants control over every detail of your shot, Capture One is the software that you should be using which is the second reason that I don't use Lightroom to tether. I'm a people shooter, so those skin tones are incredibly important to me. Capture One Pro is not a Photoshop replacement. Blemish repair, liquify, compositing, all that fun stuff, that is still gonna happen in Photoshop. Just like buying a piece of equipment, don't take someone else's word for it, do your due diligence. Most of these software options offer free trial downloads. Remember, the full list of software is on my blog and the link is below. Just like with the software, do your research and find your best solution. Just be sure to back things up while you're shooting. Canon cameras offer a feature called parallel file writing. This allows you to shoot tethered and have the files written to your camera's memory card as well as downloaded and saved to your computer. Nikon, Sony, and the others they don't offer that option. So my solution is two external hard drives attached to my laptop. The primary is a one terabyte solid state hard drive. This is the drive that the files are downloaded to from the camera. The second drive is a one terabyte 7200 RPM drive, which is the backup drive. I use a simple piece of software called GoodSync, which is available for Windows and Mac to monitor my primary drive and copy files to the backup drive. After I shoot, I then transfer the files from the solid state drive to my main system where they're automatically backed up again and also backed up off-site using the system that I describe in this video. After I know the files are backed up on my main system and off-site, I clear both of the external drives that I use during the shoot so that they're ready for my next shoot. So there you have it, a starting point for your research on tethering software and some background on why I use Capture One Pro and how I back up my files. You know, tethering also provides me with another benefit that I haven't mentioned yet. I have a bad habit of working too fast. Working fast inevitably leads to mistakes. Tethering forces me to slow down and it allows me to process my files during the shoot so that I'm able to have an incredible amount of control over my images while I'm still in the studio with this subject still in front of my camera. Remember, if you're a beginner at photography and still learning the basics like the exposure triangle and depth of field, store this information in the back of your mind and go out and shoot a heck of a lot more images before you seriously consider making this step. If you're experienced with shooting people and you feel that you have your technique down and you're comfortable with your post-production techniques, then tethered shooting is going to allow you to take your imagery to the next level. Now some of you may ask about tethering wirelessly and why I didn't cover it in this video. For my needs, wireless tethering is not ready for prime time, mainly due to the slow downloads. I'm pretty confident that that will change over time. It's just not there yet. Whatever you do, pick up that camera and shoot something because your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.